Hello and welcome back to another edition of Student of the Gun Homeroom. I am your host Paul Markle and today I'm wearing my uh, There Is No Weak Side shirt from iKickHippies.com. That's iKickHippies.com. Check them out. That's a little free plug for you guys there. Uh, the title of this video today is going to be California deputies shoot and kill 13 year old boy with replica handgun and rifle. And why is that? And what happened? A, number one, uh, people are going to be wringing their hands that this tragedy, they're wringing their hands. How could this happen? How could this happen? This should never happen. And this just proves that we need more gun control in America. That's what half of the country is going to say. The other half of the country is going to say, what is going on with police officers that they're shooting kids with replica guns? All right. Uh, the report initially said that it was a replica non-firing AK-47 look-alike and that he had a plastic pistol in his waistband. The kid was 13 years old of Hispanic descent and was in uh, Northern California. 3 p.m. in the afternoon, it says, the story says, deputies on patrol spotted him. Okay. That is a key factor in this story. It said deputies on patrol spotted the teen, which means they did not receive a phone call from someone screaming, help me, help me, there's someone with a gun murdering me. Okay, that makes that is a valuable point. Because uh, right now, not all the facts are in, as, it, as in uh, why the deputies did what they did and their statements and so forth. All right, it's still under investigation. But what do we know? We know that the police officers saw a kid who in possession of what they thought legitimately was a gun there in Northern California. And uh, according to the initial reports that have been released by the police, they told the kid to drop the gun, drop the gun, and after he failed to drop the gun, they shot him, and he's dead. They killed him. So you're like, okay, well, on... On one, the reasonable man says, well, it's sad and it's tragic, but the kids should have done what they said. All right. If you are a smart student of the gun, if you are a trained concealed carry person, or even if you're not, uh, what you should know is there are three criteria that need to be met for justifiable use of force. We talked about this before, but let's talk about it again real quick. Number one, the person has to have the ability, okay, they have to have the opportunity. Okay, check. And what is the big one? What is the big block that has to be checked off before you can start launching bullets at other humans justifiably? Intent. What is the demonstrated intent of the person? Now, here's what you need to ask yourselves. Is possession of a firearm intent to cause death or serious bodily harm? Do you believe it is or don't you? Because what all of the left-wingers and the reasonable people are saying is, well, it looked so much like a real gun that the police had no other choice than to shoot the kid. Well, all right, let's play devil's advocate for a moment. What if it was a real gun? Do we just, do we send police officers out now to kill people that are in possession of real guns. Oh, no, 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 Paul, you don't know what you're talking about. Mm, hang on. Well, I just recently did a story called Blue on Blue Shootings, and what Blue on Blue is is when police officers shoot other police officers. And this is not something new. It goes on. It's been going on for decades and decades and decades. But what happens is after a police officer shoots an off, and this is, we're talking off-duty police officers here, an off-duty police officer is present at the scene of a crime, and he gets his pistol out because he's carrying, and he stops the crime from occurring, or he halts the crime, or he drives the criminal away. And then, zoom, here comes the patrolman. They rip up in their cars, and they see a guy who's not wearing the same clothing as them, holding a gun, and they kill him. They shoot him, boom, 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 boom. And then it turns out that it was an off-duty police officer that was in the process of stopping a crime. And everyone's like, oh, how can this happen? How can this happen? Well, the first thing they try and do is they try and train the target to be a better target or a worse target, depending on how you look at it. Generally, when this happens, what they'll do is they'll go back and they'll say, 
Well, we need to teach off-duty police officers how to better protect themselves. We need to teach the off-duty guys to, you know, wear uh, badges on chains around their neck or, you know, to hold their badge in this hand and use their gun with this hand. And we need to teach the off-duty officer how to better not be shot. Basically, we're training the target. And then they tell... And they, they make the police officers, you know, the agency involved, they'll make them go through a departmental training where they go through the justifiable use of force and they tick it all off just like in the academy. And you think, well, that's, that's reasonable. That's what we should do. Well, that's what we do after every single time a police officer shoots an off-duty police officer and it turns out it was negligent, it was an accident, and it shouldn't have happened, right? We do that every time and yet it keeps right on happening. And we say to ourselves, well, why does that keep on happening? Didn't they do the mandatory training? Didn't they do the, the in-service training after the tragedy, after the accident? Well, it's not really an accident, it's negligence. But uh, why does it keep happening? Well, I kind of had an epiphany myself here oh, a couple of years ago. And it's not what we're teaching in the classroom. It's what we're teaching on the training range, in the actual training arena, when they go out to shoot houses or they go out to the training range. I've been a cop. For all of you that are like, oh, you don't know what you're talking about, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I've done that. I've worn the blue polyester uniform, okay? And every law enforcement training, school, academy, whatever that I went through, at some point in time, they did shoot, no shoot scenarios. And what is the shoot versus the no shoot? You go into a shoot house, you know, a designated training area, and you enter the house or enter the room, and there's a paper target, a full color paper target on a backer, and it either is a person with a gun in their hand or a person without a gun in their hand. And so you shoot the one, if you go through these training scenarios, everybody with a gun in their hand gets shot. Everybody without a gun in their hand doesn't get shot. And you get through all the way to the end, and they pat you on the back, and they say, good little police officer, you did good. And we do the same thing out on the range. We take, you know, on, we take targets, you know, real man targets with, with a gun in their hand, and we put them on the range, and we just bah, 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 and we shoot them. And especially the, uh, or, or simunitions, we do simunitions training, we do uh, what they call FATS training, F-A-T-S, firearm simulator training, where they, it's like a video game type deal with laser guns. But in all of these scenarios, the person that gets shot, all the people that get shot are those people in possession of guns, and the ones who don't get shot are the people that are not in possession of guns. So, and you're like, well, yeah, but, you know, they're demonstrating intent. Well, paper targets don't demonstrate intent. When you go through these shoot houses and what have you and on the ranges and you're shooting with your live real guns, the, they're not demonstrating intent. They're just there. The only thing that's different between the target you shoot and the target you don't shoot is the presence of a firearm or a knife or a club or bat or whatever. So... What we're de facto doing is we're training police officers to equate any humanoid, any human person that is in possession of a gun is de facto wrong, is de facto a bad guy, and is a person that we can shoot. And they're like, oh, that's bullcrap, Paul. We went to a class, and in the class it said intent, ability, opportunity, and I took a test, and, and I got an A on that test. Yeah, I understand that. But that's not the real training scenario. That's not the training arena. In the training arena, what do you actually do when you have a blaster in your hand, officer, deputy? Well, everyone in the shoot house that has that doesn't have a uniform on, if they're not wearing a blue polyester uniform with a shiny, you know, badge thingy on the chest, it gets shot. So, are we this is what we have to ask ourselves as a society. Are we training police officers, literally training them, programming them, teaching them that anyone who does is not dressed like you that is in possession of a gun? is a de facto bad guy and get shot. Because I don't, I don't know what's going to happen in this. You know, uh, 
I have a hard time believing that the kid is walking down the street and they, the, the initial report said the kid was going from his house to his friend's house and he was taking the toy guns to his friend's house. But uh, like we said, there was no 911 call, shots fired, someone's murdered. It was two police officers in a cruiser saw a kid with what looked like a gun. And that was their go button to shoot him, to confront him. Now, am I saying don't confront him? No, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this, is we need to take a hard look in the mirror and say, are we teaching cops to just shoot people in possession of firearms? Is the possession of a firearm the go code for you know to be shot? Intent or no intent? So put that in your hat for a minute. Huh? For all things Student of the Gun, we want you to go to studentofthegun.com, and thanks for being with us. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video, and don't forget to leave your comments below. To subscribe, click right here. To learn more about firearms training, click right here. And don't forget to follow us on social media at Student of the Gun.